Good morning, and welcome to today's Coffee and Connect Live with Larry and Gloria Lundstrom. We have an excellent time planned for you today, and I am so excited to hear and learn. So with no further ado, Larry and Gloria, how are you doing today? Doing great. Doing absolutely great. It's wonderful, and we have a great program outlined today. From Milwaukee, we have Josh and Stephanie Mahumpa, and they are, they're pastoring uh, youth pastors kind of children's pastors at Glorious Oak Brothers Creek. Church. Oak, Oak Creek, Creek Assembly of God yeah. in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. And welcome, welcome, welcome. How was it? How was your weather there today? Today's beautiful. Uh, it's Whoa. a beautiful 80 degree day in September, end of September. <laughs> Happy about that. <laughs> you can't get it any better than that. Wow. Because when you get winter, you get that you get that water cold off the water. Of snow. <laughs> yeah, it could be forty next week, so we'll just enjoy today. <laughs> yeah. Well, Stephanie is is my niece and my brother Jerry, who pastors a senior pastor of Oak Creek Assembly of God in Oak Creek, Wisconsin, and and uh, so she went to Bible school. Where did you go? You went to Trinity, was it? Yep, Trinity in Ellendale, North Dakota, and that's where you met. The love of your life? No. <laughs> no. No. I think I should ask that question earlier. No, uh, Josh and I actually both grew up together in this church. Um, and so our romance didn't kindle until um, I moved home. Oh, I aren't you college. glad you moved home? I, yeah. I went to North Central when we started dating then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Didn't you take a bus or something? You would... Lots you can of ride a bus from Minneapolis to Oak Creek. Yes. Lots of Greyhound bus rides, <laughs> six hour bus rides back and forth. Out of love. Yeah. <laughs> that proved that he loved you. Yeah. He still there. loves you. Yeah. Tell us about your family. Yeah. So we have um, a five year old daughter named Chloe um, and a two year old son named Carson. So they both just had birthdays and Chloe, uh, the night before she turned five, she lost her tooth. And so that was a milestone I was not ready for. And Carson, we're just trying to get him to like the toilet. So <laughs> well, Lisa, at that age, they get the tooth back in. At our age, if you lose them, you don't get them back in. Yeah. Well, when hers came out, the adult tooth was actually already there. So we didn't oh. even get to enjoy what it looked like without Oh, it, those little, those moments are so precious. Did she say she wanted to hide it under a pillow or something and see yeah. if there was a tooth fairy that was going to leave money? Yes. Yeah, she was very excited, wondering how much money was underneath her, her pillow. <laughs> I had to sneak in at night and be the one that did it, and I thought, who came up with this idea? Who thought <laughs> you're right. sneaking under your kid's pillow while they're sleeping <laughs> and doing this Mission Impossible swap is a good idea? <laughs> and we should all do this. <laughs> it all comes with parenting. It was so cute. We was in a church one Sunday, and there was two little red-headed, freckled boys that were just in church, and the parents were trying to keep them settled down. And and the and on the back of his T-shirt, it says, "Is it uh, raising parents is a tough job, but somebody's <laughs> got to do it." You yeah. know, the children are the, this the world's best natural resource there is. Yes. And for you be, to be able to work with the children and to uh, train up a child in the way he should go and to have a wonderful church that can present Christ in the lives of the children. But we're living in a crazy time. We're living where the COVID has turned the lives around for just about every age group. And so in this day that we're living in, uh, Josh, the, how do you find that what's happening with the children? How is the is there any positives that we can bring from the kids' life in this time that we're living in? Yeah, absolutely. We can bring positives. You know, in every situation, it's how you look at it and what opportunities you you make out of it. Uh, but the kids are absolutely going through um, stuff as well and dealing through emotions and um, hurts and disappointments, um, things that they're missing out on. And yeah, I mean, their kids are being affected by this just as much, if not maybe even more than the adults are. Um, you know, kids are so it's young. interesting because we as adults, you know, we're expected to have it together, which we don't. But <laughs> if we can't get it together, you know, how do, my thought is, how do these children handle with it? You know, they're, they're locked in at home. 
uh, they can't go to church and they, and you know, your church has a huge kids program and for everybody. And so if they can't go to be with their friends and then they're locked in home and then they're being taught at home for those who are, I don't know if you still are in Wisconsin, are they back in school there? It's about half and half. Yeah, it's a mix. There's some. Yeah, so it's been, you know, how did they handle that? Well, here's my thought. We we're all planning to say we're going to quarantine for two weeks. Okay, so yay, you know, as good as it is bad or as bad as it's good, we're all going to be home, we're going to have a good time. Two weeks went by in a hurry and we think, okay, back to normal. But we forgot that there's no normal behind that door. And so for these kids, then it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. And in this area, there have been several uh, suicides because these kids were locked in at home they, the mom and dads were fighting because they were used to being together. Mom and dad were not used to the kids being home because they sent them off to school. Then, you know, we come home and feed them and send them to bed and get them up and go. So how does this affect, how did it affect the kids that you know in your church? Yeah, there's actually a mom that talked to Steph um, when we started opening up events here back at the church. Uh, do you want to share that story? Yeah, so a few weeks ago, we were able to offer... Um, Oh, I forget the name of it, but it's like a sports camp that we offered for kids. And so as well as um, offering different sports offering for them, we also had art and STEM um, that they could be a part of. And so we had an outdoor week where the kids could come at night. And mm -hmm. at the end of the week, um, the mom told me that this was the happiest her daughter has been since March. Oh, and, wow. you know, just with tears in her eyes. Um, you know, these kids and the daughter was probably seven or eight and just that their little hearts are heavy um, with not being able to be in a normal routine and not being able to do the normal things and go to church. And so many of them haven't been able to go, go to church. So they're feeling it. I mean, the kids feel, if not more than we do, you know, yeah. we can mask, like you said, and hide and kind of cope and figure this stuff out. But a lot of these kids can just be balls of emotion. Yes, and they, you know, they say, you know, and then in the homes, because the divorce rate went up over 50%, at least that's what it was in this area, uh, and people who were without jobs, um, you know, so the kids get the blunt of it, a lot of it. They get the blunt of it at home, and they don't understand it all. Uh, what did you do to help these kids? Like, if you see some that are really worse than others, how do you take care of them? Yeah, I mean, it really is like, and like any person, it's individual case by case scenario. Um, you know, there's one family that I know of, um, the kids, they're twin boys, they were born as preemies. And so they have, you know, they had had serious health conditions as they grew up. And um, they haven't left their house since February. Oh, and for this entire time, they've been stuck in their house because of a fear that, you know, if they would catch this, this would be it. And so, you know, How do you involved, address the but, fear then? Pardon? How do you address the fear to these kids? Because there's a certain amount of fear you have to have to stay, uh, you know, safe There's a wholesome distance. fear. And then the, yeah, and then the safe distance fear physically. And how do you address the fear level with these kids? I think we've seen with adults and kids, it really is case by case. There's some that you can talk through it. Others, it's a very irrational fear that, like flying, you know, flying is safer than driving, but there's a lot of people that just are deathly afraid of flying, even though it's so safe. Yes. Um, some that there's no, there's nothing you can say that will ever help them to get out of it. But for mm -hmm. others, you can kind of talk through it and think through what is an end game or what are you looking for in order to feel like you can go back into society or even be around people again? What is, what are you looking for to happen? And, and a lot of people just haven't thought that far. They just thought, well, when things feel better or I hear from somebody that things are better. Um, but if you have, okay, I'm looking for this metric or for, I'm going to put these conditions in order for me to go somewhere, that usually helps people to be able to kind of think through mm -hmm. how can I go back to a life that's enjoyable and not just stuck in my home. Sort of alters the culture, I think. I think it sort of alters the culture because it's a, it's a little bit of a different culture. But yet I've seen some dads doing some nice things. I drove him down the street the other day and I saw a dad out in the, in the backyard with his kids playing the ball a little bit. And so I guess how you approach it, how you, you improvise during the take, the take the bad, turn it around, make it good. And that's the, 
that's where I think you guys really play a big part. I really appreciated watching you, how you handle it this summer that you did. How did you do this on, on, on um, podcast or Zoom or whatever? How did you explain that a little bit, how you did that? Because you had so much going on to keep these kids involved. Yeah, when we couldn't meet in person for church right in the beginning, right. uh, I really felt strongly that we can't just let our kids not have church service. And so uh, I created what, what I called kids digital services and so tried to, as much as possible, structure it in the same way that we would do it as an in person. So we would have worship time and games and different things, but then I would do a message, but try to make it interactive, not just sitting in front of a camera for half an hour. And so try and come up with shooting on location at the beach or one of the, actually this was her idea. This is one of the best ones. Why don't you throw things off the roof and film it? And then, <laughs> and then you can tie it into, into, you know, a biblical message into that. We talked about how nothing can separate you from God's love. And we'd film a watermelon being thrown off or a Lego set exploding on the ground. And <laughs> That's great. That's great. And they, awesome. they, every day they look forward to something because they know it's going to be exciting. But yet you have the message with it. That is so great. Yeah. What did you find, Stephanie, even with your own children? Do they, uh, is Chloe, is she old enough to understand why? Of course, she has so many cousins to play with. Yeah. But does, but does she understand at that age anything about this or ask? She's five, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. And she has had several different terms that she has called all of this, saying as far as COVID, the corona, coronavirus, just the virus. And her, <laughs> It was interesting to watch her vocabulary change as she heard more. I think she even called it COVID-19. I mean, just at five, five years old. old. <laughs> five years old. Um, and really, and this started when she was four and a half. And so, and for half of that year, um, you know, this has been her reality. And so it's been hard for her. And now um, in our state, when you turn five years old, you have to wear a mask. In public and so trying to get her to do that and she complains that it's hot she's compliant but me too no it's hot <laughs> her face is sweating um yes and then to force them to wear which you have to if you're in public um well and then she's just more aware of germs and things being dirty and Yes, that's a positive, but I also view yeah, it as a negative. <laughs> um, that just some of their innocence is being kind of stripped away. Yeah. And you want them to be aware and to be safe and to be healthy. Um, but you want them to be five years old and to think the dirt is okay. And, <laughs> you know, that just some of the fear that comes with it. And uh, I noticed that she was starting to wash her hands a lot. Um, and so just trying to, and, and all that is good, um, but you don't want that to be done out of fear, you know, that it's knowledge based that, okay, there's appropriate times where I'm washing my hands, but I don't need to incessantly wash my hands. Um, you just have to, you kind of watch some of the changes. Yes. You know, and then Definitely. try to walk, because again, like I said, we thought in two days or two weeks it would be yeah. over and. And we'd all yeah. be back to normal. I, I asked one time in a women's seminar. I said, uh, I said, you know, I said, you know, living life is just like a. It's, uh, I said, what is a normal life? And one lady hollered out, "It's just a cycle on the wash machine." You know, in other words, there is nothing. There is nothing that is really normal now. And I think the hard thing is nobody can plan anything. Yeah. Yeah, the parents can't. The kids can't. You find that. That's where you've got a lot of activities going on at your church, which you've been open now for how long again? So our, we had a kind of a Supreme Court battle here in our state. And so at the end of March, kind of everything, we had to shut down and that kind of got thrown out the window and everything was open then. And Oh, I'm, in May, I'm sorry, not March, in May. Um, and so since May, since the first night that we could be open, we've been open. So end of May till, till now. It wasn't everything open right away. We structured it with like a family service and then slowly open things back up on Wednesday nights. Um, but try just to make the most of it. Kind of the motto with her dad, with your brother, with pastor has been, there's a lot of things that we can't do, but we're going to figure out what we can do in this season. 
So we've tried to offer a lot of different offerings for families uh, to be able to decide what their comfort level is coming back. When we first opened, we had a family service um, and then we started offering kids check-in um, and a family service so that if you wanted to just have the kiddos you know right with you you could do that if you're comfortable checking them in and then slowly ramping it up to you know individualized kids programming we even have a space now uh, for it's a mask only service and so every single person that enters that space has to wear a mask from the worship team all of the ushers and greeters um, and so if that's where your comfortability level is you want to come but you want every single person masked up Try to figure out how can we serve as many people as possible. In other words, how do you keep everybody happy and <laughs> yeah. safe? <laughs> yeah, it's always a moving target too, yeah. right? especially during this time. Yeah. Marnie, you be, you being a pastor's wife and with your uh, youth group and kids in the church and your own children, have any questions to ask them? And what would you, as a pastor's wife, what do you have? Anything you would like to? Yeah, so, you know, with having kiddos, uh, at least something that we've learned is, is often structure is, is really helpful. They like to know routine. They like to know that this is what is next. This is what is next. This is what is next. And um, so obviously this time has been um, interesting with most of those routines thrown out the window and, and trying to establish um, new routines. So just curious for your own family, you know, how did you kind of facilitate that? Did you guys keep routines? Did you establish a new one? Um, same with like your, your church, uh, you know, the, the kids things, did you kind of keep, you mentioned during the videos, you kind of kept the same routine. Now when they came back, did you also kind of just keep it going or did you make any alterations? Yeah, as much as possible. That was a conversation as a church staff that we had. And then with our family, it worked out that for the most part, we try to keep as much consistent as we could. Um, so like the times when the videos would come out, would be consistent with when we normally have service times here at church. Um, with our family, thankfully, um, pretty much everything has stayed the same. There's been a few adjustments uh, from day to day, but for the most part, we try to keep it consistent and the same. And um, I hate this phrase, the new normal, but in some ways you have to create that, whether it's at church or with your kids, your family. Yeah, and thankfully we have been able to come into the office most every day uh, since the start in March. And so our kids, we have someone that comes to our home and watches our kids for us while we're in the office. And so that routine was able to stay the same, but um, there was times where we did have to try to work from home. And that I feel for parents that are trying to do that because yeah. it's it was extremely difficult. And, and thankfully it was summer and we could just set up some like water buckets outside because that would take up a good amount of time with them dumping in themselves, you know, getting all wet. But it was a lot of TV and just a lot of things that it was very hard to keep their structure. And so for us, it's been a blessing for our kids that they could, for the most part, have their normal routine. And then we would try to do things on our days off. Um, I mean, a lot of things were closed. And so I mean, even when it was cold I and mean, we were doing nature hikes, like every Monday, um, with cousins and with our family um, just to try to have some normalcy for them that they could do something even though the only thing that we could do is walk outside <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they thought it was fun it was an adventure yeah. um, and it, it was, was they, and, you know running around and you know without being kind of squished into this little soldier uh, that they have to be you know inside buildings and in public spaces right now. Yeah. I would think that, uh, Josh and Steph, that you would be breaking into a new world of creativity, flexibility with oh. these children, and coming up with original ideas. How can we, and then that kind of comes another area where you're, you're focusing on where do we got to go? How are we going to get there? It's felt like at church, it's felt like there's constantly, okay, you get into a rhythm of what this, what this next phase looks like, and then everything changes and you break into a new one. 
And it just felt like, to be honest, I've told her, you know, individually, it feels like, was my best idea what I just did? I mean, <laughs> I can't come up with anything else. I'm going to figure something else out. But the Holy Spirit, I mean, I mean, he created the universe. He's the source of all creativity. I mean, the Holy Spirit, I've had to rely on the Holy Spirit more than ever in this season to come up with what to do and how, how to do it well. And thankfully, the Holy Spirit's been there. And then with our family, yeah, it takes a lot of creativity. Um, they both have had birthdays in the last few months. And so how do we have a birthday party for these kids, you know, and give them some fun for their birthday and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. How did you handle that? Because you couldn't have all their little friends because you got enough cousins. But right. you know, how, how did you do that then? We ended up splitting um, our families. So my family had one day and her family we had one day uh, for each oh. of the birthdays. And we did it. The majority of it was outdoors. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the weather was nice enough to be able to do that. But I tried to make the most of it, figure out what we could do. Yeah. Well, the good thing is, is God created within you, Josh, that you're still a kid. So, <laughs> you know. It's like Larry Levy over in Wisconsin. We'd always say, uh, he, you know, they, even though they, he grew older and was grandpa, he was still a kid. He never grew up, so he could really connect. And Steffi, you have such a compassionate heart, and yet you have this ginger in you. You've got this uh, mischievousness <laughs> enough, and yet love that you fit in so well with everybody that you meet. And your whole family does. But with no absolutes out there now, that makes it really difficult, and that's where you really have to be creative. But yeah, imagine the uh, the uh, ideas from the kids. Like I heard about this one little boy. There was a pastor got up and he says, "If you had all the money in the world, we could would that get you to heaven?" The little kid says, "No." And the other one says, "If you were the best person, you, you did the most kind things, would that get you to heaven?" He says, "No." Well, how do you get to heaven? The little boy speaks up and says, "You got to be dead to get to heaven." <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth? harder than some of us adults <laughs> oh my so how can i ask how are the teenagers doing how does this affect i know this is just a level but because you have so many levels what is your church attendance not that numbers means everything but it does mean everything because it's people it's souls what are you running in in your attendance right now is it coming back yeah it started off and I think most churches across the nation have experienced this where mm -hmm. it wasn't everybody's back. Um, mm -hmm. And so we had definitely seen that, but thankfully I feel like our church has done extremely well in bringing back people and in even bringing a lot of new people, a lot, yeah. ton of first time people are entering through our doors. And so on Sunday for the first time since COVID, we had 200 kids on Sunday morning throughout the church, which is the best yet. And then on Wednesdays when we have youth, uh, for the teenagers, they just had 170 kids on Wednesday, which again was the best that we've had since then. And so each week we've seen it, it's slow but steady uptick. And so we praise God for that. And um, what we've seen, you know, a lot with Steph's role, with having to reach out to people, that in order to get people to come back, it is an individual conversation with people. It's, it's almost like cold calling and like checking in with people and, um, seeing what can we do to help you feel comfortable to come back to church and be with the body. Yes. And to have people used to, um, being home, like we, we, we were locked down here for weeks. They just, they, they lock us up and then two days later they lock us down and uh, it's crazy. Uh, but you know, you, you, you hate to say you're going to church as a habit, but you, yeah. you need to make it a habit that right. you just go, this is what we do. And of course the Brooks family, that's, you know, and so uh, when you don't have that habit, when you're at home and then to get out of the house, come out of your pajamas, put your coffee cup down and, uh, you know, you can get so relaxed that you're just saying, Lord, you know, just give them that desire. That has to be Lord, getting that desire to be back, to be united as a group of people again. Yeah. I, um, I talked with a guy in his 40s um, this past Sunday who just started coming back into the building. He has... Uh, people in his life that uh, his grandparents that he helps care for and you know and so he wants to be very careful for those that he loves and totally respect that um, but he has started coming back and he just said you know I've gone here for 40 years and it doesn't matter how many sermons you hear online services you know are great well we had to do it 
but it's about being with other people mm -hmm. that that's what being about church is yeah. not as much as we work hard on those sermons yeah. <laughs> and we hope that they are a blessing it's, yeah. it's really being together as people and the kids you know that they they want that too they want to see their friends yeah. they need that especially kids and i think of these poor teachers well my heart goes out to all of them physically emotionally mentally especially in the whole bit you tell me you can put in 80 kids in a classroom and then you tell them don't stay six feet apart and when you go to the playground you can't touch when you're playing your ball you can't you know i mean everything's changed i said i don't know how it could ever work i don't know i read this this morning uh it was and it was out of a uh arizona uh place that combats depression and whatever and it says maintaining a sense of meaning and purpose in life also is a core of component of well-being Many people fulfill this need through work accomplishment and the ability to provide for their families. The rise of massive unemployment due to COVID-19 threatens this sense of satisfaction with life. Limited options for employment can increase a sense of hopelessness and negatively impact physical, mental, and emotional health. And they were saying of, of how many adults, you know, and if you have adults that are falling apart, what about your children in the home? That's right. You know, that breaks your heart because yeah. they're the innocent ones and they look to us, good or bad. We're an example. What did you say that? You like teach by de design or neglect. Yeah. 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 And at this point of who we are in Christ and, you know, you know, how to handle all this is really something. So what is your plan? If so, how do you progress from here? What is your next step? See, I'm putting you on the spot. What is your next step for these children when you see them searching? And they are, they're searching. They're hurting. They're looking for hope. They're look, even the little kids, are, they're looking for life. They're looking for fun. So you're going to just keep, keep building these programs, I guess, right? Yeah, we're getting to points where I have to continually recruit more volunteers. Each week, it's more and more volunteers to join the kids' teams because we need more adults to connect with these kids. Um, there's a kid um, from our church who it's really sad just found out this week he has cancer and is in the hospital and it's, you know, there was a tumor growing and it's just crazy. Um, FaceTimed with him this week and um, for him, he just lit up, you know, just the FaceTime, the connecting. And then his brother, he has an older brother as well. Um, he just, he want, he needed like a FaceTime, a connection because he's been kind of locked away now. And um, it's that, connection with the kids let them know that you are valuable that somebody mm -hmm. sees you and cares about you mm -hmm. and somebody else than mom and dad I mean mom and dad need to do that uh, but somebody else a godly loving adult makes such a difference in a kid's life yeah because we as adults and the grandpas and grandmas we this is a huge time for ministry yeah just sending text messages if they saw grandma send them a text just saying I care about you or you know if it's through some way of you know giving them ten dollars for a mcdonald's or you know just a, a, a you know email whatever if any time anybody needs to know that they're cared for it's now you know because there's still a lot of people locked away yeah mm -hmm. a lot of them and it's in for for the seniors uh <laughs> we've been heard we've been put in a different category for the last few months <laughs> we thought you know we know we're not 50 anymore we know we're not 55 we know we're not 60 we know we're not 65 we know we're not 70 we know we're not 75 we're 76 and 77 but when they say that there were the elderly and the vulnerable i would <laughs> somebody say you're gold you're not old <laughs> And you know, you want to be used, you want to be effective, you want to pass that joy, you want to pass on hope. And uh, so what would you tell these grandparents? What do you tell these when you're trying to get them connected with the kids, which is really important? How can you do that? You got such a big machine there. Yeah, there's actually, it's, this is a kind of a huge story, a kind of a huge win a testimony with this. There's a lady that used to help. She's in her 60s. She lives with her mother who's in her 90s. Um, and been checking in periodically. And so I just messaged her last week and she was like, wow, I was just going to email you today because she's like, I am so COVID weary. I mean, she had been with her, her sister who's also in her sixties and the nine year old mother. 
they've been locked in the house since March, only went to the grocery store kind of thing. But she says, I want to come to church. And is there anything I can do to help with the kids? And so I invited her to come to church, just attend a service, just to see what it's like. Since you haven't been with people in six months, just yeah. see what it's like at first and see how you feel. Um, and then you kind of have to figure out, you, got, you have to be cautious on all sides. You know, you don't want to, you, you have to evaluate for yourself what your risk is worth and um, what you want your life to be doing right now. And so whether it's in person, a little deeper, pardon, explain that a little deeper. And there's a, there's a risk, no matter what you do, you right. can cross the street and something could happen, right. Or you're driving your car, there's an inherent risk. And so you have to evaluate for yourself. What kind of risk do I want to take on? You know, what is worth it to me? And then what can I do to protect myself from risk to lower the risk for myself? And so if I want to minister to kids and I want to make an impact on the next generation, I want them to know the love of God. What is that risk worth to me? Or am I willing to let them be on either unchurched, undiscipled because I'm scared of my risk and what could happen to me? Or am I willing to figure it out for myself, figure out whether it's in person or another option, figure out with your pastor what a different option could be to help these kids, whether it's making calls or mm -hmm. doing Zoom calls or something like this. There's something that we can do to reach the kids. We don't have to be checked out. That's it. There's something. If everybody thinks they can do something, even if two you know, people, if they would make two, everyone listening today, you know, it was interesting. I, I was making a list this morning of uh, Marnie, of those who have been, that I've kept track of from what states that they've been, came in from the last few days. It was Montana, Florida, Washington, Virginia, Canada, North Dakota, Alaska, South Dakota, Idaho, Minnesota, Kansas, Tennessee, Iowa, Pennsylvania, Missouri, Hawaii, Colorado, Oklahoma, Arizona, uh, Texas, Wisconsin. And I'm thinking if a, each of these people are listening uh, today would just say, you know what, I'm going to contact two people five days out of the week. Yeah. If I just send a note to two people, just think of the thousands, you know, the hundreds and the thousands of people who could be touching lives. And so I would encourage anybody listening. I've been so encouraged by watching, uh, watching you, how you're doing with children, uh, your programs with, with uh, Stephanie, with your brother, John, with the young marriage, my brother with the adults, you know, and Marnie with her church and with her outreach there and them reaching into community where we are doing a fantastic job that we can even do more. And if we just will pick up that mantle and say, there's somebody hurting out there today and ask God, God, give me, bring somebody to mind bring somebody's picture to my mind that I can send them a note or make a call or send a text because you never know what that phone call is going to mean. Uh, the letters that we get, we a lot of letters, a lot of text messages, a lot of emails of people just feeling like they're at the end and they just said, I'm locked in. There's nothing to live for. Can I you give them a reason to live for? Have you ever thought of this? Have you ever thought what would be out there? We're having so much, debate right now about the vaccine, whether there's vaccine, what, does it work? Doesn't it work? What about the mask? That's another up and down. We got all these things, but what would they say if someone came along with similar to something like the, uh, the pill that they had out, uh, hydrochlorine or something, uh, they come along with a pill and it was guaranteed to work. Would that be good news? How many people would be racing for it? But you see what happens is we all were hooked with the pandemic of sin in the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. And everybody gets it. Nobody is eliminated from it. But there, this is where the power of the gospel comes in because the scriptures tell us how beautiful are the feet of them that bring the good news. Mm -hmm. The good news of the gospel. Yeah. There's a cure and you won't have to be quarantined in a place of destruction. You can spend your lifetime with Jesus Christ. And you will have that ability to have joy and peace. And but yet all but what you gotta do, you gotta believe. Yeah. Believe. And so, so here we're here we're coming in this. What do you believe? The mask, do you believe the vaccine? What do you believe? Well, talk to those who've had it. And I've had that, I was lost, and I came and found Christ, and being saved 
is much better. Yeah. And yeah. To, oh, I tell you, it's joy unspeakable <laughs> and full of glory. It's it, it pass, peace that passes all understanding. And what happens? Uh, this is you know I say this over and just about every every program. I say that I was searching. How could you know whether you're to take the vaccine, whether you're to take the mask? But the Bible says we can know, in 1 John 5, 10, we can know that we have peace with God. And this is the greatest good news message. And you have the right. Everybody has the right. Yeah. You can say, hey, take a hike. God will let you go. Yeah. Or you can say, I want to know him as my Lord and Savior. I want him to come into my heart. And well, what happens, my, I like my, what my brother used to say, he says, give your heart and life to Jesus. If you don't like it, the devil give you your sins back. <laughs> that was terrible, but true. <laughs> well, free will, because he's given us yeah, all free will. Yeah. What you're talking about, Larry, when I was sitting here, because I, I live with you, and it, it vibrates out of you. I mean, <laughs> the love of it, and love for the passion for souls, but if we can keep that same passion to share that with the children, not just the children, but everybody we meet, that yeah. we give them hope and you're going to make it through. I'm praying for you. I'm checking up on you. And uh, I mean, God is so good. I like what uh, Carl Malls used to say that traveled with the Lundstroms for a while. He says a Christian should be like a barrel of water. It doesn't make any difference where they blow a hole in you. Jesus ought to run out. <laughs> I want to be that. <laughs> I mean, Ron is a barrel, but I, that's what I... <laughs> oh, I your dad said that, um, something your dad said that really, he was trying to challenge some people in the church to really, you know, step up and serve. He said, I wish that you would be as concerned about people's spiritual health as you are as their physical health. Mm -hmm. and I, Larry, that's what you're saying, is that we're, we're so focused on the physical health right now that we're losing sight of the spiritual health. And mm -hmm. you're right, praise God, that we yeah. are saved. I also love what uh, my brother, Pastor Jerry, has mentioned a couple of times. He said how he handles the uh, this whole situation of the COVID-19, of where you go, how you go, wearing the mask. You are teaching your children how you respond to yes. authority yeah. Yeah. and to God. And as a family, and he said that's as, just as important. And I, I thought, you know, that's that's yeah, a yeah. big lesson right there. That's a big yeah. lesson. So I want to thank you for joining us. This has been so fun. We should do this in a few months again. Yeah. yeah. Thanks yeah. for letting us talk with you this morning. And come back and join us. Do you have any books that you would suggest for people to resources? Resources. Do you have yeah, any? There's there's two I'd recommend for anybody in this kind of category with kids and spiritual health. And there's one that kind of deals with kind of with trauma and the kind of like the big questions of life. It's called talk now and later. It's written by Brian dollar. It's talk now and later. And it's about that. You talk about what you can now and then keep talking about it with your kids. Oh. And so it covered a ton of topics and he's an assemblies of God pastor. He's phenomenal. And he's one of like the big kids pastors in the nation. Um, so that's, a huge resource, especially for this time. And then when it comes to me and the author again, please. Sure. Talk now and later by Brian. Oh, Potter. Yeah. And then David Boyd, who is the BGMC director, he just came out with a book called strong enough to last. And um, it's a great book just about how do you raise kids to love Jesus? That mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Great. How can you make that faith last a lifetime? Yes, yes, it's what we pass down, you know, it's how we live. Kids are real. They look at us, they know what's real or not, you know. Thank you for being real. Love your yes. family. Marnie, we love you and your family. They are such a true, t and they're going to be on, Marnie and her husband's going to be on on October uh, 7th or 8th, I think. I <laughs> have to see what the Wednesday is. <laughs> testimony of it and how they came to Christ and, and now they've been in ministry for how many years? Oh, 23, you look too young I think. For you look too young for that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. I started young. <laughs> Marty, tell where they can uh, check us out to, for, to catch up. They can't watch today. So many, 90% um, of the people look at this after the program is already over. So where can they uh, check us out? 
All right. Well, as soon as this is all done and I'm able to take care of it, I will pin it as an announcement in the private group. And so you can rewatch it from the beginning there. Also, uh, by the end of the day, I will have it uploaded to uh, YouTube and also to our website at www.LarryLundstromMinistries.org. Just click on the CC Live. There's a big picture banner or you can go to the menu. And also, you know, maybe there was something and you've got you have friends, you have friends with kids, uh, maybe you're a grandparent and there was something that you heard today. You're like, oh, I think they need that encouragement. I think that's a key maybe that they need. Um, you can definitely share this with a friend and uh, on YouTube, there's options to share. Also on our website, uh, there's three little dots up in the corner. And if you click those, um, it will give you an option to share there as well. So those are some ways that you can uh, get the message out. Our, our our kids need us, and 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 they 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 need to know security. Um, but that security ultimately is only in Christ, and so uh, continually pointing to Him is is just the best way. And uh, the way we do that is by showing it in our own lives, right? I'm pretty right. sure you guys agree. <laughs> we <hear it. laughs> well, the only thing you can take with you when you leave this world is people. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, let's pray and ask God to uh, direct people, encourage people to reach out to somebody else. Because if everybody just, everybody that's going to see this, if they just committed to two people a week, wow, we could just two even. Man, you could do 10 a day if you have nothing to do. And, and just think of the lives mm -hmm. that you would give hope to. Father, we come before you and we just yes. love you. We thank you for this time together with Joshua. Lord, we thank you for Stephanie. We thank you for their family. We thank you for their church. We thank you for Marnie and Kirk and their church. And Lord, what they're doing to reach and to help children and teenagers and all ages. Now, Lord, I pray that you would help us bring to our minds people who are hurting today. People that you will bring to the minds of everybody watching this. And they'll say, wow, God just brought something to my mind. I need to just make that quick call. I may just need a quick text message or an email, or send a card, or whatever it might be. But Lord, let us remember that people are hurting, and we have the answers. We have the hope to share with them. Bless us now in each one of us until we get together again next week. We're yes. going to thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Have a great week. Thanks for being with us. It was fun. Thank you. Fun. Thank you. Bye. Give those kids a hug and your whole family. I agree, we will. <laughs> It was a fun time. <laughs>